running them red dirt roads out kicking up dust. My name is Rex. I'm the primary instructor for Bell Speak, which is a California Bell training school. I train people in bell bonds and bounty hunting but I am also known as a small business problem solver. I've been known to troubleshoot a lot of problems for bail bond companies, not necessarily in relation to bail or bail jumpers, and have been hired to do other projects that are completely unrelated to bail. Uh, getting back to some of my problem solving, uh, some people wanted to drive pickup trucks, but they were concerned about California law with respect to transporting firearms, not to mention uh, some of the more established bounty hunters carry a considerable amount of equipment. Now, what I had to do was figure out a way for a client uh, to look not necessarily like he's hunting somebody, don't stick out too much. My choice was the Ram 1500, particularly the black one. The reason being is that there are a lot of them on the road. So you just kind of can easily blend into a neighborhood without being too obvious. Uh, moreover, I decided to go with a truck bed cover to turn the trunk into, uh, excuse me, the truck bed into a trunk or locked container. Um, however, we bounty hunters tend to carry a lot of equipment once we get up and once we get running. So I had to figure out a way to lock up ammo and firearms along with other less than lethal devices and uh, uh, the types of things that those use, such as L uh, Taser ECD cartridges or maybe beanbag rounds, which we'll get into in a separate video, separately. So I had to come up with a truck bed organizer and a cover that could fit all the equipment that we carry for bounty hunting. And we'll move forward from here and that's what this video will be about. Now, one thing I wanna mention uh, as an observation before we get started is the addition of the Lear cover on the Dodge Ram 1500. Now, the Dodge Ram 1500 Hemi is a really, really quick motor. Now, the mile per gallon on the Hemi without the cover, the average miles per gallon was about 18.2, maybe 19, and I am not heavy footed. Interestingly, once I added the cover, the average miles per gallon went to an average of about 19.2, but I can actually get up to 24 miles uh, to the gallon with the addition of the Lear cover. A word about body armor. Body armor, uh, and what I'm talking about is uh, Kevlar for all intents and purposes, should be stored flat and it is not to be left in the vehicle year round. Uh, Kevlar tends to degrade. So just while you're working, store it flat if you're not wearing it. Uh, don't leave it in your car year round. The shelf life according to manufacturers is generally about five years. And uh, what some bunny hunters will do is they'll take old vests like this and drape them over their seats. Uh, if we get a chance, I'll show you my driver's seat where I have an old vest actually on both sides. We got one panel to the back, one panel to the front. And the reason why we do this is when we're driving in the hostile neighborhoods, uh, it helps just in a case of taking on fire. Hopefully we get a little extra protection. Moreover, I have my radios stored back here. And this allows me quick access to my radios. And I uh, carry five radios as the team leader and distribute them to my team uh, during team operations. Here we have my bounty hunting, what I call war bag. I have flex cuffs, flashlights. I have my bounty hunting files. I carry an extra uh, trauma plate just for general purpose. My flashlight of choice is a stream light. This one's pushing probably about 18 years old, probably going to 20. And here is a inside shot of the cab of the Ram 1500. Now here's a shot from the back of the truck. And with respect to the Lear cover, notice this hump in the middle. That's gonna figure prominently as I move forward. Now, with my keyless remote, and I think this is pretty cool, it automatically unlocks the Lear cover. Right now it's locked. Hit it twice, it pops open, and there you go. Spring loaded. Now, notice the boxes here. I do a lot of bail education. So what happens is I pack these boxes full of a bunch of seminar and classroom and pre-licensing materials. So as I open this, it'll expose the truck bed organizer. In this particular case, I went with decked. You'll notice that there are two drawers there. And when I bring the cover down, notice that even with the organizer, the boxes fit perfectly. Moreover, I traveled from Northern California to Southern California. It was storming, raining, sleet. I mean, it was bad. And this all stayed dry. None of my stuff got wet. 
All right, let's go ahead and pop this open. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, show you that there are two key uh, locks here. And when it comes to bounty hunting, we're gonna go through what it is and how it is that I use the particular organizer. Of course, with some of the other stuff on top for the purposes of hunting. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use this here. You'll notice that both of these drawers are locked. We'll just go ahead and open these up here. And we'll slide them open and you'll notice that we got quite a bit of space in here. And we'll very briefly go over what it is that I use for bounty hunting here in just one second. Now, one thing that's really super important when you're transporting anything having to do with firearms, particularly in the state where I'm from, California, is the law requires that a firearm be locked uh, in the trunk separately from ammunition and be unloaded. So for those reasons, we have two separate drawers. This drawer is where ammo is stored. This drawer is where unloaded uh, firearms and less than lethal devices are stored. First things first, I have uh, my personal tactical helmet for high risk fugitive recovery. This is a level 3A helmet. It comes equipped with a point of view camera and a light on the helmet for uh, after a situation secured. You don't have the light on while you're creeping through a house. It just gives the bad guys something to shoot at. Secondly, I also have my tack vest. Okay, again, it's for the high risk fugitive recovery. I'm just gonna fold this up, put this back in here like that. Put my personal helmet away. Always very important, uh, generation three night vision. We'll go ahead and zip this back up and put him away. Thor shield, vest cover. Uh, this protects you from the effects of the Taser ECD. As I indicated before, you really wanna keep your ammo separate from your firearms in terms of being locked separate. This has to do with a uh, distraction device that I'll talk about here in a second. Then, as we move on down the line, we've got uh, Taser ECD cartridges. This happens to be for the X26. Then, when we get to our third and final case, you open it up and I've got magazines for my Glock 22 and also uh, cartridges for my X2, which is semi-auto taser ECD. Let's go ahead and close the right drawer and move on to the left drawer where we carry our firearms and distraction devices. This is the actual duty belt that I wear when I'm bounty hunting. Uh, weapon retention holster, very important. I have a red gun there. But let's go ahead and move on to what it is that I actually carry in this while I'm working. And for those of you out there thinking, wow, that is a lot of cool equipment that he carries in his truck. This is only when I'm bounty hunting. Other than that, this is completely empty at all times. Now, before I open this case up, which has uh, the lethal side and the less than lethal side of the bounty hunting kit, I'm gonna walk over here and grab a couple items that are extremely important for bounty hunting purposes, okay? First, we have one of my original shoulder bags. This original shoulder bag has, pop this open here right quick, has a couple of used Kevlar panels. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this is a lot of our bounty hunting work is, isn't just done in the rural areas. We do a lot of urban work as well. And we have to load and unload constantly while we're bounty hunting. So what we do is we set this up like that. This here is a brand new item that's gonna be carried on the upcoming Bell Speak store. It also has a level three panel in it. I just put it there for demonstration purposes for now. We'll go ahead and pop this open. And you will notice I carry a Glock 22 while I'm working. I will point it at two Kevlar panels to clear it. It is empty. That is my Glock 22 for bounty hunting. Now, this is an old M26 Taser ECD. We move over here to the law enforcement version X26. Uh, currently, this is probably my favorite Taser ECD. This is the Taser X2 is a semi-auto. No need to get into that right now. Lastly, one of the new items we're gonna be carrying on the Bell Speak store is this less than lethal device. I'm gonna do a separate video on this item here. At any rate, we'll go ahead and close this back up and move on to the next box. 
Now, since this is a hunting video, I'm gonna go ahead and open up one of the cases for some of the more high risk rural type operations that we do. I personally specialize in the gold country. That would be Amador, Calaveras, and particularly Tuolumne County. You may want to uh, carry 223 grade uh, level uh, self-defense rifle. Uh, I reject the assault rifle terms. I don't think that inanimate objects assault things. This is for personal defense only. And this very rarely is very rarely ever even brought out of the case, but we do carry it just in case things get a little felony hazardy. I'm gonna go ahead and put the tailgate back up just for a second. Let's say you have to stop somewhere and you need something in the back of your truck. When you pop this open and you open it, from the casual uh, observer's point of view, this just looks like ordinary paper boxes, which is why I use these instead of the containers that look like they're holding things that might be really expensive. Let's just real briefly go over some of the things that a bounty hunter may carry uh, in these regular boxes you pick up at any office supply store. Here is an extra level three A helmet just in case somebody in my team forgets their stuff along with an extra tactical vest. All right, let's move on to the next one here. Bring this down right here. And again, we've got some extra Kevlar helmets just in case people on the team forget their stuff. I like to make sure that the guys that I lead into Bell Future Recovery Operations uh, don't have uh, don't walk in a situation where they're missing some important safety equipment. Okay, last box. There's just uh, a few extra items that I carry while we're bounty hunting. This little bag here carries all kinds of safety goggles, all kinds of uh, ballistic rated lenses. It's for eye protection. Sometimes we do a lot of looking into attics or going to areas where we need extra eye protection, and this is just loaded with all kinds of different uh, options for that purpose. Okay, let's go ahead and pull this, this guy out right here. Now listen, since this is technically a hunting video, we're just not real clear on what it is exactly that we're hunting. No hunting kit would be complete, especially in some of the areas that I work in, without different types of ghillie suits. Uh, this particular ghillie suit fits a particular type of terrain and season, as does this ghillie suit. Plus we've got our extra covers there. Then as we come over here, we've got one of my original ghillie suits, which works great in all kinds of different environments. If you have to blend in, maybe you think that uh, you've got a bell fugitive that is holding up in a particular location and you don't want to burn the location and you might be given a doing surveillance uh, in conjunction with what I'm wearing, uh, it makes it real easy to get dropped off someplace, particularly in the rural areas, uh, where you can get a good overwatch on a suspected location. Uh, then again, with the communications equipment that we carry, calling the troops when you see your bell fugitive. Let's just go ahead and get this stuff back in there. We will go ahead and lock these up right quick. There's one. There's two, close the lift gate. Bring this down. And since we're going to be going inside for a minute and everything's locked. My name is Rex. I'm the primary instructor for Bell Speak, which is a Bell training school out of Tracy, California. Yeah. You know what? I like the players. No dick a dick.